Happy Wednesday and welcome to Talk Radio with Dr. K, the place where talk is power. You are listening live at WOKB 1680 AM right here in sunny Orlando, Florida, or wherever you're listening from. I am hoping that you are at this very moment jumping on with us live at the WOKB Facebook page. If you are able to get to your device, your phone, your tablet, your computer, wherever you may be, I am inviting you to join us live. I love the fact that we can now listen and watch radio all at the same time. That's the beauty of this technology, that we're able to watch radio. Who knew, Glenn? Who knew that one day we were going to be able to watch radio? So I'm so excited about that and always so excited to come back week after week Uh, As a result of our amazing sponsor, the New Life Church of God in Christ, where Bishop Derek W. Hutchins is the pastor. And I am so grateful for that sponsorship and our opportunity to come back week after week after week. You have been uh, giving me some amazing feedback, and I'm so thankful for the feedback that I get, and I'm really grateful that you tell me how meaningful it is to you. Thank you for those of you who continue to listen week after week, and you're inviting other listeners to join us as well. While you're here, why don't you share? If you're here with me on Facebook Live, why don't you share it? And let me hear from you. Let me know that you're here. Uh, Drop something in the comments to let me know that you are watching. I see that Loretta Weeks is watching. Hello, Loretta. Ashley Weeks. Hello, Ashley. Thank you both so much. Uh, so much for joining us. Those of you who are also viewing, just let me know that you're here. We've got an amazing show planned for you today with my special guest. But before we do that, I want to pause for the cause. You know what's coming up. If you've been listening now for a few weeks, you know what's coming. So I've got to talk about this um, before we jump into our dialogue today. The 2020 I'm God's Girl for Real Virtual conference is coming on October 31st, and I am inviting all of the women to join us. If you have not grabbed your ticket, I want you to go ahead and grab your ticket today at the I'm God's Go For Real dot com website. So just go visit I'm God's Girl For Real dot com to grab your ticket. You don't want to miss this virtual conference. We start at 10 a.m. We'll be done by noon, but it's going to be a power packed time of just hosting our guest of honor, who is God, our father. And I'm so excited. We've got Wonderful speakers joining us this year. Lady Kenya May is going to be talking to us about freedom from brokenness. Heather Pounds is going to be talking to us about freedom from bondage. And then Tara Carissa Hodges is going to be wrapping it up for us as we talk about she who the sun sets free. So our topic, our theme this year for the I'm God's Girl for Real conference is free indeed. Listen, for those of you who ordered T-shirts, they are on the way. Your free indeed T-shirts are on the way to you. So you should be getting those shortly. Glenn, we need some applause for the free indeed (laughs) T-shirts. Yes, 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 yes. So you'll be able to rock your T-shirt for the conference because that is our declaration. We are declaring, and I want to pause right there. We are declaring that we are free indeed because she who the sun sets free truly is free indeed. And so we're going to be talking about this notion of freedom and how we claim the freedom that is ours, the freedom that Christ came to give us far too often. We really are walking around broken. We are walking around in bondage. We are walking around entrapped in things and cycles and patterns and habits that we just can't seem to break. While at the same time, 
missing this tremendous gift of freedom that Christ came to give us. In essence, what we're doing is living so far beneath the promises of God that are ours. And so it is my heart's desire for us to together collectively to claim the freedom, to claim the promises, the things that God has entrusted to us, promised us, the things that happened at Calvary for us to have that part of abundant life, right? For us to be able to claim as our own, I want us to be able to go get it and to be in pursuit of our freedom. And so that's what this conference is all about. We're going to have these uh, speakers speaking into our lives. Evangelist Linda Robinson, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so glad you're here. Pastor Darlene Foster Body, big sis, thank you for being here. I so appreciate you. God bless you, Evangelist Rhonda Stinson, Marie Moyer, thank you, Cheryl Morton. She says, hey, Dr. K, hello. Tamiqua Lovett, thank you so much, James Morgan. Um, I love you, too. I am so feeling the love. Thank you so much for joining us. Katrina, my namesake, just spelled differently. Katrina Harris, thank you so much for joining us today. Listen, share it while you're here. My special guest is arriving. Y'all see him walking in, right? I know you see him because we're live. We're on Facebook Live. And so you just you just saw the grand the, <laughs> let me say that again. The grand appearance of um, my special guest, Bishop Derek W. Hutchins. Yes, yes, yes. This is our time to chat with the bishop. So the, today's today's show is dedicated to chatting with the bishop. Hey, babe. Hey, sweetie. How are you? I'm blessed and cannot be cursed. I know you are. I know you are. I'm so glad to have you with me today. Ah, looking up and moving forward. Well, I, um, so, you know, there are some people who, uh, Marie Moyer said, hello, Bishop. Hello. (laughs) It's what a blessing to hear from First Lady Moyer. Yes, it is. That's out of Baltimore, Maryland. And our um, pastor supervisor mother, Darlene Foster body says, hello, my bishop. Hello, ah, bishop. God bless you. Evangelist Rhonda Stinson said, hello, bishop. So you're, get, you're getting a lot of hellos, bishop. Well, it's a joy to be with you and with your viewing and listening audience. Well, I'm grateful. So this is what I did this morning. So when I knew Bishop was coming, Glenn, you know, I like to, to poll the audience. So I went to the I'm God's Girl for Real Network because we didn't have a real, to- uh, a real topic. We were just going to come and chat, right? We were just going to come and chat. So I had to ask my girls, what do you want us to chat about? You ready, Bishop? I don't know if I'm ready or not, <laughs> but uh, I'm here. <laughs> So it is so amazing. So I've had a little help from my girls. Hey, listen, all of you girls who contributed to these um, to these questions or comments or thoughts, I want to keep hearing from you. So I want you to drop your comments and your thoughts into the comment section as Bishop and I have this this chat chatting with the bishop is live and in person today so I want you to share it with others um so bishop when I when I kind of looked at the questions thematically that's the teacher in me you know I had to look for the themes running through it all and so it kind of Uh, came out in three themes. And so let me tell you what our themes will be. Our themes are love. All right. Communication. All right. And ministry. Three good uh, positive themes. Yes. Love, communication, and ministry. Listen, if you didn't have an opportunity to drop your thoughts and your ideas into the comments in the I'm God's Girl For Real Network, we are live on Facebook, so you can drop your thoughts and your comments in the Facebook live comment section. Hey, don't forget to share it 
um, while you're at it. Share this with others. Let them know that today on Talk Radio with Dr. K, I am chatting with the bishop. And so, Bishop, we'll kind of break these up into our three themes and take a break and regroup and come back and visit some more questions and thoughts. Um, Yumika said to ask Bishop if he is still praying for Kevin. <laughs> Listen, Yumika, that's not on the list. Praying for Kevin is not on the yes, list today. Yes, praying for Kevin in all three areas. <laughs> Love, communication, <laughs> and ministry. That is a good answer. That Absolutely. is a good Kevin answer. Kevin has my sincere <laughs> prayers as God uses him to cover the women in his life. Oh, my gosh, Kevin. That was for you. Okay, you, Mika. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start with the category of love. And Pamela Feaster Pamela, I hope you're watching. If not, I hope you, uh, mother supervisor, is cracking up at you. <laughs> um, Pamela Feaster, if you're watching um, live or perhaps you'll see this in the replay, this is your um, thought for a bishop to cover for us to chat about. So she wants us to talk about the beauty of love and how to fully love or how to love fully is what she said. So the beauty of love, that's very broad, and how to love fully. All right. Uh, so you want to go first and I uh, ride the wave of your thoughts? I serve at the pleasure of my bishop. <laughs> how about you go first? All right. <laughs> Glenn is cracking so, up. <laughs> Uh, let's go with this. Love. Love. What is love? What is uh, love? First of all, God is love. That's a spiritual connotation mm -hmm. overlapping all of the various aspects. Uh, but in a natural sense, now, hear me when I say, love is an understanding between two fools. Love is an understanding between two fools. Why do I say two fools? Why? I say simply because it doesn't make sense. It's almost paramount to foolish because it causes you to give a commitment that's illogical. It causes you to have emotions that are irrepressible. It causes you to have a undying selflessness that is uncomparable. So how does one describe something that is undescribable? It is an understanding. The two people who love each other have an understanding that this is beyond understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm grateful because I have <laughs> uh, the dubious privilege of not only talking about it, but I'm not only talking it, I'm walking it. I have a, an unquestionable love for you and... Uh, an inexpressible emotional attachment to you and uh, a uh, uncanny uh, ability to enjoy uh, the many facets of your multi-personality. <laughs> and, and I can't I'll explain it, there. so it is an understanding. <laughs> Uh, between two fools, and uh, we look uh, uh, we look like uh, uh, a couple who is unexplainable. Yeah, I that that's good, Bishop. That's good. Okay, I want to hear from you. What what are you all thinking as you hear Bishop chat about love? What are you thinking as you hear him chat about love? So I, I will add to that. So because Pamela Feaster said the beauty of love and how to love fully. And I love that she added that part about loving fully, mm -hmm. because I really believe that to love someone fully means that you take them flaws and all, you take everything about them, you love them holistically. Um, you really begin to understand the power of unconditional love. You know, I like to even say it this way, love covers. And when I think about a covering, I think about something that is used um, to 
to warm us, to comfort us, to protect us. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I believe that love is that covering that you share with each other. Yeah. Well, that's, that is certainly true and uh, most important. I think uh, the flip side of that coin, one oh, side Oh, someone is, wants to know, excuse me, Bishop, because I want you to answer this. <laughs> Uh, she wants to know, when did you know that you were in love with me? Okay. <laughs> Answer that um, part. <laughs> the, we'll get back to that in just a moment. Um, what I do want to say at this, uh, at this juncture is that uh, when you say love fully, that means full emanates that it's a process. It's a process of elimination. Mm -hmm. It's a process of eliminating the restraints, the personal restraints that you have. Mm -hmm. you, you, when you say covering, you're talking about the other person. You're covering the other person. But when you talk about the aspect of fully giving of yourself, mm -hmm. that's a process of elimination. All right. So we talked about the beauty of love, Bishop, and how to love fully. So this comes from... Uh, Evangelist Linda Robinson, um, and I'm going to kind of merge these together. So there are some thoughts from uh, Evangelist Linda Robinson, Charlene Evans, Inez Nobles, and these all kind of fell into the love category. So they want to know just kind of how do you find love again after a certain age? How do you find love again after this? Uh, after a certain age, babe? You know what they really want to say. What's that? Uh, how do you find love when you get old? <laughs> right. So when you're older, you know you're not a teenager. You're not a young adult. Right. You know it's love after a certain age. So when you're older, you know because they're probably looking at us. We've been married for two years. Um. You know, and I hope that you know they're encouraged by the fact that. You know, love happens, right? Yeah. Love uh, continues to happen no mm -hmm. matter what age you are. So how do you speak to that? Well, I think that the older you are, the more um, prone you are. The older you are, the more prone you are to be mature enough to identify love. Mm -hmm. The older you are, the more mature you are to be able to identify love. Um, sometimes uh, people think lust is love. Mm. Sometimes people think admiration is love. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people mistake love for an emotional feeling that comes as a result of a, a compatibility, co a cosmic chemistry. Uh, love is something deeper than like. Love is something deeper than physical attraction. So as you mature, you learn the aspects of love and you know it when you see it mm -hmm. or when you have it. Um, it, it beauty is uh, in the eyes of the beholder. Mm -hmm. So to one beauty would be this, to another beauty would be something else. But love is synonymous with all people in that the true essence of love is selfless commitment to another mm -hmm. uh, and the compatibility or the chemistry makes it possible see you can be love you can be in love with the wrong person or the wrong type absolutely so as you get older hopefully you can understand to stay away from those things that would lead you to uh, falling in love with the wrong type. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can be in love with a person who's not worthy of your love. Mm -hmm. So as you get older, hopefully you can, uh, you can discern this is a person who perhaps is worthy of my giving up my love. I love that you said worthy. Mm -hmm. You know, you and I talk about the fact that um, as humans, that we have an intrinsic need for three things. Mm -hmm. And those three things are to be seen, 
to be heard and to be valued, Mm -hmm. to be seen, to be heard and to be valued. And so as I listen to you say that and you talk about someone being worthy of your love, even being able to ask that question, do they see me? Yeah. Do they hear me and do they value me? Right. See, as as young people go in and out of love, uh, that is the individual A is in love with individual B. Okay, but that doesn't mean because individual A is in love with individual B that individual B is capable of capacity. loving. Capacity, that's right. We talk about capacity. Right, so you can fall in love with somebody who doesn't have the capacity or the ability or the skill set to love you back at the same level. Absolutely. So hopefully you will learn to discern. See, that's the powerful point. And you, if you don't learn to discern then your loving a person doesn't mean they're going to love you back. Absolutely. I think that that part about capacity is so important because we don't always assess someone's capacity. We will have expectations, Mm -hmm. but we don't assess capacity um, to meet those expectations. And so I think that's critically important. And when I go back to the question, even about loving at this age or, you know, can you find love after a certain age, I think um, as you get older, you have to adjust even what you're looking for. So when you think about finding love after a certain age, you know, sometimes I talk to people who are my age or, you know, kind of in that space of being older, but still wanting love, still wanting to be married. And we talk about adjusting your lenses and and, and, and managing expectations because, you know, he may not, even if he comes tall, dark, and handsome, he's still coming with baggage because at this age, no person is baggage free, right? And so sometimes we don't want to deal with what comes with the person. And that goes back to what we were talking about earlier, flaws, right? Yeah. Those yeah, kinds I, of I, things that yeah. come. I want to continue to insert this, uh, this phrase, learn to discern. Learn to design. T-shirt. Y'all know I get a T-shirt every week. You cannot cannot have a mutual uh, relationship of love if it's not, uh, if both people don't have the capacity. So we've talked about love. We've we've talked about communication. Let's see if we have. I just want to say this on communication. Okay. Uh, Communication. Uh, is uh, paramount to a good relationship. Yes. Uh, But also remember timing. Timing Timing is everything. Uh, You know, we talk about listening, uh, one person (laughs) being willing to listen to the other. Usually we're talking about males learn to listen because we're prone Mm -hmm. to be fixers. We want to get to the point. Okay, what is the problem so we can get to this? A, B, C, A, this is the problem. B, try this. C, see you later. So we want to do the ABC, <laughs> kind of get it, get it over and out. But uh, sometimes women want to be expressive. So women must learn uh, what time to, uh, what time is most best suited for those expressions. And then men must learn uh, what time, because uh, you may not want to do it right then, but you may need to know this is the time you need to do it. For instance, if she's upset and you're trying to call it a night and you say, uh, Brother Glenn, uh, what's wrong with you? And she says, I'm all right. And it's the way she says it, you know, you could turn over and go to sleep. But <laughs> Brother Leon a, is cracking up like, oh, right. my gosh. It, it ain't all right. So Here they go. Glenn. That may be the time that you're going to You know to he's to, right. <laughs> Maybe the time you're going to have to cut off the football game and just uh, listen uh, because um, some people say happy wife, happy life. I don't do that. I don't do that phrase. Yeah. Happy wife, happy life. No, 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 no. Here's the ideal. Happy spouse, happy house. Mm-hmm. Happy spouse, happy house. Both people have a right to be happy. And one person's happiness shouldn't be at the expense of another. And it should be a mutual contribution. Exactly. To one, that, to that, to the, 
to the, to good the, of the marriage. happiness of the, of the house, right? right? Both right. people have a responsibility to contribute um, to that level of happiness. That's so good, Bishop. I'm glad you added that. That's really good. Um, before we move on, someone wanted to know, Michelle... Um, Noisette and Katrina Harris, I'm going to put them together, but they wanted to know kind of how couples are sub- surviving the pandemic. So um, people are working from home. People are being in in houses. So you, you talked about a happy house, a happy spouse, happy house. So when people are now cl- in closer proximity to each other, uh, perhaps um, at longer periods of time, um, what are your thoughts about or tips for navigating together when you're in pr- uh, close proximity? And um, and for people who are single, you know, kind of what are some things that single people can do? Um, because this is certainly infringed upon their social life to some degree. So what do you say as a way of um, speaking to these couples and singles during the pandemic? The pandemic has caused all of us to rethink uh, our uh, mutual engagements at all levels. Uh, Well, let's start with marriage and the couple situation. Uh, Unfortunately, domestic violence is on the increase during Mm -hmm. the pandemic because uh, people are unfortunately uh, incompatible to their mates. Hey, babe, wait one second. Braxton Browser Sr. is watching us. <laughs> and so I've got to say thank you, sir, for That's my book. I got it in the mail. Yeah. I am loving it. Listen, I want to invite you to be on the show with me to talk about your book. It's so amazing. Thank you so much. He says one person's happiness should not be at the expense of the other. I so love that. So love that. So he's repeating what you said, Bishop. Bishop always says, listen with the intent to reteach. So I'm hoping that some of these nuggets he's dropping, some of the the things that we're sharing, that we can really, um, I've loved having him here, and we we can go back and forth um, like this all the time, and we do. But it's my joy to be able to share it with you. But even in our sharing, I am hoping that you all are grabbing some nuggets, some um, some application for your relationships, for your lives. Not that we are experts on relationships. We are far from that. But one thing that we can talk about is our own lived experiences, the lessons that we've learned and the things that have worked for us and the things that haven't worked for us and how we are able to speak out of that. So, babe, thank you so much for um, letting me interject that. Absolutely. Uh, I've learned much more from my failures than I've ever learn from my successes. Mm -hmm. I'm far too ignorant to speak wise, but I pray I'm too wise to speak ignorantly. Okay. Glenn, did you catch that? You got it. Okay. My point to all again is learn to discern. Mm -hmm. If you're in a marital situation and in doing this pandemic, you have to learn to discern where she's at or where he's at, even in the same quarters, Mm -hmm. because you can be together and not together. That's right. But what your goal is, is to be together together. Mm -hmm. You can be together and sleeping in separate bedrooms. So you can be together and alienated and isolated from each other in terms of a real harmonious relationship. So learn to discern what is the time to be affectionate, what is the time to be uh, kind, what is the time to be overly generous, what is the time to a uh, surprise with gifts of generosity. Yes, that part. That part. Discern that part. Learn to discern. <laughs> I'm saying it because my love language, Bishop knows that my love love language is gifts, right? So he is he is so masterful at surprising me with gifts. And so I'm so grateful, Bishop. We are running out of time. Listen, drop me some hearts. Drop me some hearts if you want Bishop to come back. <laughs> 
um, at another time and we have chatting with the bishop. Hey, let me know if you would love for that to happen. Just give me some hearts if if you would love to see Bishop come back and we do more of chatting with the bishop. Babe, the hearts are coming. <laughs> they are rolling in. Um, so we cannot disappoint these faithful listeners of Talk Radio with Dr. K. They are saying they want more, more, more. <laughs> So you'll have to come back. Listen, before we end, I want to jump over to ministry. We talked about love, a little bit about communication. It's so complex. We could do a whole show just around communication. But here's a ministry question that I think um, is really, really relevant. Uh, Cynthia James Walters, Dr. Cynthia James Walters, wants to know, how do you work collectively for God's good and still live out your individual calling. So how do you work collectively for God's good and still live out your individual calling? We've got 60 seconds to respond to that. Well, as a couple, you, and again, learn to discern when you're combining with another person. Make sure the person who you're uh, seeking to be your spouse or your mate uh, has aspirations in ministry like unto your own and is secure enough in their own ministry to celebrate your ascension and your elevation. I could have had this program as my own program. Uh, I sought to give it to you uh, to that I could facilitate an opportunity for your gift to come forth. Mm -hmm. Um, So you want to be attached to a person who is secure enough to allow you to excel and wants to do everything in their power to enhance the gift of God in you. Mm-hmm. And you're doing a fantastic, phenomenal job. It Thank was you, a great choice uh, to make others. Anyone can make themselves, but you're never bigger than when you pause to make another. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that I had a little something in elevating your talent and exposing it to all those who are blessed by it. Thank you, sweetie. I so appreciate that. And you continue to speak into my life um, as it relates to what you see in me. And I'm so grateful for that. I thank you for um, being here with me today. But more importantly, I thank you just for loving me. (laughs) I thank you for loving me. And I thank you all for joining us today. That is our time. It went by too quickly. Bishop is going to come back because you've been loading (laughs) us up with hearts to come back. And so he will definitely be back please share this with others um, in your network Um, our chat with the bishop thank you for joining us and listen wherever you are whatever you're facing and whatever is facing you I want you to remember to do just one thing and that is to speak life I'll see you next week